If a chemical reaction releases heat, we say that the reaction is exothermic. And if a reaction takes in heat, we say that the reaction is endothermic. How can we tell if a reaction is exothermic or endothermic? If you're in lab, you can safely touch the bottom of the test tube or beaker. If it feels hot to the touch, then most likely it's an exothermic reaction. If the test tube or beaker feels cold, then most likely it's an endothermic reaction. Let's try a reaction and figure out whether or not the reaction is exothermic or endothermic. In this beaker, I have sucrose, normal everyday table sugar. And in this graduated cylinder over here, I have concentrated sulfuric acid. Sucrose belongs to a group of organic compounds called carbohydrates. And carbohydrates contain three main elements, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. It has a molecular formula, C12H22O11. What is the molecular formula of sulfuric acid? I'm going to add sulfuric acid to this beaker that contains sucrose and stir the mixture with my stirring rod. What we should be looking for is a chemical change. Now, when we do a chemical reaction, what indicates that a chemical change is taking place? It turns out that each of these choices could indicate that a chemical reaction is taking place. A color change, some sort of explosion, the appearance of bubbles, or an odor are hints that a chemical reaction is occurring. So let's add the concentrated sulfuric acid to the sucrose and see what happens. Okay, so what happened? Remember that sucrose has the chemical formula C12H22O11. Carbohydrates were once known as hydrates of carbon. And hydrate means a water molecule is attached or associated with an atom or molecule. In fact, if we rewrote the chemical formula of sucrose to indicate it as a hydrate of water, it would be C12H2O11. This tells us that for every 12 carbon atoms, we have 11 water molecules associated with carbon. What are the possible products if sucrose, C12H2O11, is dehydrated? When we added sulfuric acid to the sucrose, the mixture got so hot that the water vaporized, and we saw that as steam rising from the mixture. This solid black gunk is what we're left with, and that's carbon. Based on this demo, do you think that this reaction was endothermic or exothermic? The steam that we saw rising out of the beaker helps us figure out this reaction. This was an exothermic reaction. We can talk about a chemical reaction in terms of the energy of a chemical reaction. In order for a chemical reaction to be exothermic, the energy of the products, the solid carbon and the gaseous water, have to be much, much lower than the energy of the reactants, the sucrose and sulfuric acid. In fact, we can draw a graph of how a chemical reaction proceeds from beginning to end. This diagram is called a reaction coordinate diagram, and this gives us an idea of how a reaction begins. At the very beginning, we have the energy of sucrose, and as we added the sulfuric acid to the sucrose, the energies of the sucrose and sulfuric acid increased. Now, as I stirred the mixture, this added even more energy to this reaction. And finally, the reactants got to the point that they were able to react with each other with the right amount of energy. This point at which the reactants have received enough energy to start a chemical reaction is called the activation energy. So once we get to that point, the reactants begin to react and form products. And once we start forming products, the reaction begins to lose energy because the energy of the products down here is much less than the energy of the reactants over here. This diagram tells us that this is an exothermic reaction. Now, if we had an endothermic reaction, the reverse would be true. The energy of the products 
would have to be much, much higher than the energy of the reactants.